Today on the news and why it matters, the winners and losers of last night's Super Tuesday has come and gone, and we have got a huge breakdown for you. It is coming up right now. Welcome to the news and why it matters. I am Sarah Gonzalez, today joined by Grant Stinchfield, conservative commentator. Grant Stinchfield in the house. Thank you for being here. Great to be here. Did you, were you up late last night like I was analyzing results or did you just wait like no. normal people to just see the results in the morning? Because it turns out they're the same damn results. You just get to sleep and then see them. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah that's pretty much what I did actually. I, I perused it okay. and then I woke up to see the final and there were some surprises which I'm sure we'll talk about a little yeah. bit. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, so Grant's one of the smart ones. I was stuck here and apparently am not. Uh, we've also got Jason Howerton in the house, social media. Also program. down, by the way. Jason, yes. Yeah, Jason, you were up here with us, right, last um, night? I was. Okay, yeah. So we were just up here just going over things. You can, oh, I don't know, get the next day. And the full results the next day right. at you home. Have more full picture and yeah. sort of speculating of what could <laughs> right. happen. It's like we're useless. I don't even know why people. I just... Okay, all right. Okay. Whoa. All right, Boy, that's enough. Is, you this can is going stop wrong there. here. Uh, and the Blaze.com's own Aaron Colin, <laughs> or as I like to call him, my favorite Blaze.com reporter. Oh, thank you so much. Don't tell the oh, others. Wow. Okay. Uh, got a lot to get into. Let's start with, of course, who won each Super Tuesday contest. Um, Biden obviously outperformed, I think, what? Even Biden thought that he would do going into Super Tuesday yesterday. Uh, so Biden snagged Alabama, Arkansas, uh, Maine, Massachusetts, Minnesota, North Carolina, Oklahoma, Tennessee, Texas, which I do want to get into more with you gentlemen, because that one was it was on the fence going into Super Tuesday. There were a lot, a lot of pollsters who thought that Bernie might take that. Uh, and Virginia, which also he outperformed in Virginia. Sanders, of course, took California, Colorado, and Utah. And we can't forget Mike Bloomberg. Good old Mike Bloomberg. Uh, he got American Samoa. Big win. Which I think is going to give him the, mom the momentum he <laughs> needs to make that final shift and uh, finally become the candidate. Grant, you agree, right? <laughs> uh, in all seriousness, though. Biden. Yeah. He did outperform, right? He did better than most people thought that he would do. He did exactly what he needed to do. Yeah. And so for me, it's really hard to take away from last night because my ultimate goal is, is who can Trump beat the easiest, mm -hmm. right? But yet, in some respects, Biden winning restored some of my faith in America mm -hmm. that they weren't going crazy for Bernie Sanders. And it, and it really, I think, is proof that maybe the large majority of even Democrats are not left-wing socialists. They're just lefties who, who have a different vision than we do, but are not all out socialists. So I, I took it as very good news that, you know, for the nation, that Biden would win a state like Texas in the Democratic primary and even some place like Minnesota. Um, but then is it bad news for President Trump that he's got to go up against a Joe Biden? I think President Trump beats a Joe Biden, any one of these candidates. I think he, he handles them. But I don't know if it's going to be as easy as it would right. be going against a Bernie Sanders. Yeah, well, but, the, but, the, but the, the stakes are lower, right? There, the, there are lower stakes now that it's not just an avowed socialist who is just at the forefront. Yeah, I, up right. So, so the stakes are lower, certainly, that it would be devastating for America if we had Bernie Sanders. But when you consider what Joe Biden poses as a risk to America and the freedoms that we know and love, mm. it's really saying like, well, all right, well, you're going to get stabbed with, with you know, a, a kitchen knife compared to a machete. Right. Like, you're still getting stabbed. Just pick, yeah. Yeah, and, and, and it's going to be in the heart no matter who, who takes this. Right. Because, you know, Joe Biden wants to take away your guns. He proved Beto O'Rourke, you were talking about it. He puts him up as, to, in, uh, uh, as his guns are. <laughs> this is a guy who said he's going to put everyone who has an AR-15 in jail. Mm. And so, you know, is it, is it stakes not as high? I don't know if I can go that far. Certainly, maybe. Yeah, Jason. Right? So, well, so I think, I think the support for Bernie is certainly over-indexing because of how unenthusiastic Democrats are about the current list of candidates. So I think that's number one. I want to circle back to Texas because you know, I think people know I have a lot to say about that subject and, and we, can, we can get to that. I know. No. But I think the 
I want to give you the headline that would be the headline if we had like a normal media that was just focused on what is newsworthy. Mm -hmm. The headline would be Donald Trump outperforms and shatters turnout records for a sitting U.S. president with basically no, yeah. I mean, he's, he's running unopposed, right? It's, I think it was in Vermont and Minnesota. He beat every uh, past incumbents total in Maine. He had every, uh, he beat every primary candidate's total before Reagan in Massachusetts. His story was similar. Uh, in blue California, 1.4 million votes. So for him, to me, that's the big story, mm -hmm. is that like Democrats are kind of on the fence trying to figure out, oh God, do we have to go with a socialist or a guy who's losing his mind? And the numbers are a little, I think they're thrown off because of that. For Trump, it looks pretty clear. I don't want to get ahead of uh, anything you know, and, and underestimate Bernie or uh, Biden like they did Trump. But at the end of the day, Trump is looking good. And, and the fact that we're not talking about that more I think is 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 kind of telling that that you know of what people are focused on. No, you don't want to put too much stake in that though, right? Because it's March. Sure. And there's a lot that could change, especially oh, with coronavirus and the of economy. Course. You know, there's well, a lot yeah. that could change between now and then, especially when you look at most people are looking at the the economy as sure. the number one factor when they and go it will into be. the booth. Oh, in and November. it will be, no matter what. The economy is number one for Trump. If he can if things can hold together and there's some things that are out of his control. Um, and he'll get the blame or the or the praise for it if yeah, whatever happens. He's not going to get praised well, not for Not for the much. media, but from voters, he will if, if yeah. everything is looking good. Can I just say, because I feel so strongly about this, and, and you nailed it by the media not writing a legitimate headline. And when you talk about coronavirus and the economy, I want to tell you the stock market right now has nothing to do with the economy. It has to do with a devious media that mm -hmm. is so hell-bent on taking Trump out that they are willing to destroy Every one of your 401ks out there, yes. every single one, they will destroy what you have worked all your life for in order to unseat President Trump. And so, of course, they're not going to write the headline that should have been written yesterday. Mm. Yeah, I don't think Trump has anything to worry about from the Democratic candidates. I think he's still solid on that. Uh, Biden is still not a good candidate. I mean, he had a good night. He had a great night, but he's still not a good candidate. And he had to have all these people come prop him up in order for him to have the night that he had. Literally prop him up? Literally, probably. I mean, he was probably asleep for half of it. <laughs> but we're going to get to these one-on-one -on -one debates, and Joe Biden is going to have to talk for a long time. And he's going to ramble, and he's going to stumble, and people are going to remember that despite the South Carolina win and these numbers in Super Tuesday, that he's still Joe Biden. He still doesn't know what state he's in or what day it is. And that's going to kind of tamp down enthusiasm a little bit. And I think Bernie Sanders is not totally out of this thing. I mean, he's, he took a blow, but I don't think he's totally out of this thing. And we're still probably going to see a contested convention. And I don't know where that's going to go. Mm. Well, on the note of Joe Biden, just continuing to, you know, I think give Democrats pause as to whether or not he is up for the ride. Uh, last night in one of his speeches, he, I can't, you could say, if you weren't taking into context all the other things that have happened with Joe Biden, that perhaps it was an honest mistake. Who hasn't mistaken their wife for their sister and vice versa, right? I mean, I'm sure you fellows out there can relate to like, it's my wife, oops, I mean my sister. Gross. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, but I hope happened, you guys can't relate to that. <laughs> it happened to Joe Biden last night. By the way, this is my little sister, Valerie, and I'm Jill's husband. Oh, no, this guy. Oh, they switched on me. This is my wife. This is my sister. This they switched, switched on me. On me. It happens all the time. I'll just come into my bedroom. Now, I don't know what happened. Where's my sister oh, no. instead of my wife? What are you talking about? You pulled the old switcheroo, <laughs> ladies. Now, I don't know what happened before that clip, but they didn't switch in what yes. we saw. They were just standing there, and then he... That was, okay, yeah. that was my question. So, so the, I really would like to know... I would like to see full coverage from the beginning. Did they sneak behind and go to the other side? The side of his brain that was working switched. <laughs> what happened? Do you understand Joe Biden has brought this on himself? Because just as you said any other day, <laughs> oh, he messed up, his sister's standing here, his wife, you got it, you got it wrong. But now, because he does this every single day, I'm Joe Biden, I'm running for Senate or right. president or whatever, he, he cannot remember, we've got to break down. Did they switch earlier? It was, it was somebody <laughs> that's, that's true. That's on Joe that's Biden. How much no, we're no, no. That is on <laughs> Joe Biden. It was a lot easier for him to do because he did this a lot, right? But it was a lot easier. Obama would be like, "Yeah, Joe," you know what I mean? He could play it off, and he wasn't in the. But now he's like, he's in the in the spotlight, 
and it's every time he talks. And that's the thing, like, when, now that he's the front runner again, like, he doesn't do well with that because when the scrutiny comes, we see all these things and we remember how bad he is. When he's kind of getting marginalized in the debates and not having to talk, it's like, okay, Joe, it's Joe Biden, you know, vice president. Mm -hmm. Now it's like, oh, yeah, it's Joe Biden who really is not mentally in a place to be president. It's going to be a problem. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, well, I've got a buddy who misses short putts all the time, he, like, yips him. Yeah. So what happens? We make him putt all the short putts. Like we're never giving him one. So that's what is happening to Joe Biden. He's missing the short putts, and we're making him putt everything. Yeah. Uh, so Joe Biden, he has kind of run as I was Obama's guy, right? Like I'm, I'm just. Oh, you loved Obama. You should love me because I was Obama's guy. And I, I do think that that is something that he has working in his favor to his advantage because. As you guys pointed out, there's not a lot else going on up there. Uh, but Bernie Sanders, I think, maybe has taken notice that that was working for Joe Biden. He did not release an ad ahead of Super Tuesday, but he has right after Super Tuesday today. And uh, it features Barack Obama just singing a whole lot of praises for Bernie Sanders. Bernie is somebody who has the virtue of saying exactly what he believes great authenticity, great passion, and is fearless. Bernie served on the Veterans Committee and got bills done. I think people are ready for a call to action. They want honest leadership who cares about them. They want somebody who's gonna fight for them. And they will find it in Bernie. That's right, feel the burn. I'm Bernie Sanders, and I approve this message. God, that's annoying. First of all, that's really annoying, and I didn't like it at all. But two, <laughs> okay. let's let's be clear of what that is, because his base is not that fond of o the Obama establishment kind of uh, era. Mm -hmm. So this is a play for the for the black vote, right? It's not. That's I mean, let's just call a spade a spade. He's hoping that he can get some of that support away from Biden. Biden enjoys more than he should, I think, from his past yeah. policies, right, and his comments, put y'all in chains, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But because he was Obama's VP, he's got that. So Bernie's trying to pull that away by saying, hey, look, I got this this black friend over here the big thing, likes me. The big thing that you, did you just point to me? The, book? <laughs> <laughs> the big thing that you see with these ads is like, Obama said nice things about like every Democrat, because this is what he did. He just said nice things about people. So yeah. everybody can put together one of these clips where he says nice things. But one of the pictures in the ad was showing the meeting they had where Obama was endorsing Hillary Clinton. Like Obama doesn't like Bernie Sanders, and we all know that. And Bernie doesn't like Obama. So I, I'm not sure who this yeah. ad is fooling, but I'm try, not even convinced everything said there is about Bernie Sanders. So I've been in TV for 20 something years mm -hmm. and my ear is pretty good when it comes to audio. That was cut up and clipped up when he's talking about who's, I'm not even convinced they were all, <laughs> all those comments were about Bernie Sanders. I think they were just strung together and then leave him at the end with feel the burn. Yeah, the burn. Mm. Well, yeah, it'll be interesting to see if that works. I th I'm, I'm with you, Aaron. I don't think, I think even though the voters are watching this, just looking at the, just the, differences in speech and just uh, presence, I think people are going to be like, yeah, you're not, you're not like Obama. Yeah, and what we're you're, you're an angry old white guy. Right. You're, this, this, you're not Obama. He hates the establishment. And what we're seeing, <laughs> you're just yelling. What we're seeing in these elections is that he's not expanding his base at all. He's sitting at like 25%, maybe 30% some places. It's just his people. Mm -hmm. And nothing he does is really going to get well, him I, out of that because he's so extreme and he polarizes himself so much. Somebody had really good, I wish I could remember who it was. It was, it was great analysis that. It was for, me. <laughs> <probably>. no. <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> For some reason, Bernie went further left than he did in 2016 instead of saying, OK, I've got the Medicare for all. I got free stuff here, free stuff there. Let's let's get this pile of 30 trillion dollars of free things. Yeah. And instead of just saying, OK, now I'm going to appeal to the more moderates, too, and try to bring them in. He decided, no, we're also going to do forgive all student debt. We're going to do all this other extreme stuff. And so now he's kind of pigeonholed himself into this very extreme category, and I think it's going to be hard and for him. The problem with trying to reach black voters as a Demo black Democrats are often more conservative relatively than other Democrats, and that's why they're going to Joe Biden, because it's kind of like a thing like, well, what other choice do I have? And so Bernie Sanders, no matter what Obama had he puts out, his policies and the way he presents himself is going to be just too far left for a lot of the people he's trying to reach. Yeah. So what do you think Obama thought of that commercial? Oh, I think he was pissed. <laughs> he was mad. Yeah, especially because he's trying to stay out of it, right? Yes. Like he's trying to wait for the right. winner. He's not even endorsing his, his former VP, right. his guy. So, so yeah, I'm sure he's very annoyed right oh, now. Oh, yeah. I cannot even imagine the phone call that took place after he found out that that was happening. Uh, up next, we will get into Elizabeth Warren, where she goes from here. And, oh, poor Mike Bloomberg.
RIP to his campaign. We will have uh, a lot to get into there as well. But first, I want to talk to you about Black Rifle Coffee. Uh, Evan Hafer founded Black Rifle Coffee Company in 2014, along with Army Ranger Matt Best, who you guys have seen on the show before, uh, our good friend of Blaze TV, Matt Best. And as the combination of two passions, developing premium roast-to-order coffee and a commitment to supporting veteran law enforcement and first responder causes. So Evan started roasting his own coffee in 2006 to bring with him while overseas, and then he even refitted his Humvee to roast coffee during deployments. That is, that is dedication to the cause. Uh, these days, the Black Rifle Coffee Company offers a variety of roast profiles. They've got light, medium, dark. They've got my favorite, which is like pumping through my veins right now, which is the double caffeinated blend. It's the calf blend. Highly recommend it when you stay up way too late looking at stupid Super Tuesday results that you can just see the next day. Yeah, highly recommend the calf blend for that. Uh, Evan is continually researching and experimenting with new roasting methods, coffee origins. Uh, you can look into the exclusive coffee subscription. It is a monthly limited release of exotic micro lot coffee from different corners of the world for all you coffee snobs out there. Join Black Rifle Coffee Club. You can get discounted prices on your club orders, free shipping. And if you use my discount code, you will receive an additional 20% off your first order. That's a discount on top of a discount. They've also got awesome uh, premium gear merchandise. Their mugs, I gotta tell you, I mean, I love our mugs. Their mugs are heavy duty. They are awesome. You have got to try one out. It is blackriflecoffee.com slash Y. Use promo code Y for 20% off your first purchase. That is blackriflecoffee.com slash Y. Enter promo code Y. Before we get into uh, Elizabeth Warren and Mike Bloomberg dropping out today uh, after Super Tuesday results, I want to touch on, I know we briefly mentioned Texas, the results in Texas. Joe Biden uh, did win Texas in the Democrat primary, but it was, well, last time I checked, we don't, we don't have the full results yet, but last time I checked, it was fairly close uh, within a couple, right, within a couple percentage points at least closer probably than Beto and uh, Ted Cruz, which would indicate to me that socialism is still on the rise in Texas. Exit polls show. Hi, now. I, I'm just saying, let me, let me tell you, exit polls showed mm -hmm. that uh, dem people who identified as democratic socialists in California, 54%. In Texas, 57%. Mm. Okay. One, I'd like to know the, the uh, methodology. I would like to know where, what counties, because if it's Travis County, throw it out, because good. I'm ready to just cut out Austin and Travis County out of Texas, toss it across the Rio Grande and be done with it, because I'm tired of it. I'm tired of the Californians coming here. Let's real quick break down what happened in Texas this uh, Tuesday. So Biden did win with 700,000 votes. Mm -hmm. Bernie was second with 617,000. Mm -hmm. Trump was... 1.89 million in Texas in an uncontested race. This, these numbers from this year, are he barely beats his numbers from 2016 in Texas. It's not this surge of, of socialism in Texas. I, I, I am See, sure I, of it. I, but you can't be so sure. How close did Beto come he's not to a, unseating he's not a Ted Cruz? He's a moron. But he, but he, he identifies as a democratic socialist. And he Does came, he? yes, and he came way you. too close. And I, I think that if you are not careful, you will see Texas taken from you because everyone wants to walk around saying we're going to be red forever. I'm, I don't think that's the case. I moved to Texas 20 years ago. And the neighborhood that I live in, or the area that I've moved around this neighborhood, but the area that I live in was solidly Republican. When I moved here 20 years ago, you can't find a Republican congressman sign up in the neighborhood. And that's in East Dallas area. You go north up into the Plano Richardson suburbs where Pete Sessions hold, yep. held 32. He lost to, to this ex-football player who's going to be up against a race this, this time around. This is changing. This state is changing, and it frightens me to death. And the reason it's changing is because people from California and New York are moving True. here to get away from the oppressive policies, but then for some reason, because the idiots that they are, they vote for them all over again. Yeah. Okay, there, but there is a difference between turning purple and turning full-out socialism. Yeah, but this is Texas. We are red to the core. If Texas turns purple, 
We are finished mm -hmm. as a nation. Well, with, well, with I, I don't know how you get around that. So where I'm at, I don't know how you get around that because you've got immigration from Cali and all these other places that are being destroyed and, and, and crap running through the streets. And then you have uh, the demographics changes with, with the immigration. So I think it's inevitable that Texas turns purple. What I'm trying to do is preserve the values because I know, I've known Democrats and, and Hispanics and they're a huge part of our culture in Texas. You can still have the culture. I'm more concerned about our culture dying, not so much about being re Republican. If it goes socialist or like far left, then God forbid the I- the culture is being Republican. It's, ab it's about low it's regulation more, environment, true, low taxes, true. That's being pro-free markets. I never say pro-business, pro-free markets. Well, that's good Democrats for everybody. Democrats are that. Are, like, that's what, uh, the, we need the coalition of- what Democrats uh, are like that? There's a lot no of Democrats are pro-free uh, market. I, I know none. You don't know any no, pro I honestly don't. I, I don't. I don't. Want, Name you, me one. You need to, you need to meet <laughs> Tell some. me one. I, I do need to meet some. <laughs> I would love some. to meet a pro-free market Democrat. I'm not saying they're, they're running for office, but they exist in here. Right. I mean, I will say this. I will say this just to chime in. Uh, and I hate to keep going back to the 2018 uh, election, but I do think that it did show us a lot. I did see in very wealthy neighborhoods, I mean, mansion-type houses, Beto signs, Colin Allred signs, who is a democratic socialist, who ran as a democratic socialist, signs all over their yards in these very, very wealthy neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't figure it out other than to just determine that the Democrats are much more effective at their messaging at kind of, uh, you know, selling this faux version of democratic socialism and making the people think that they know exactly what it is when that's not actually what it is. Right, so you've got the combination of the people, more Democrats moving to Texas, and then a lot of these Democrats, especially the younger ones, saying at high, higher numbers, numbers comparable to California, that I view socialism favorably. And then you also see polls that show that people don't know what socialism is, and so it's just this combination of people voting because of their party and hearing the socialism thing and thinking, oh, maybe it just means uh, everything's a little bit fairer for people. But they're not like they're not voting on principles or values necessarily, but they're still supporting it. And so there is the danger that as people just kind of move in that direction, that Texas can move away from that because it, you're pouring. It's not that the Republicans here are changing their values, but it's that there's more opposition to the values that we have here. And so if you're not careful and if you don't keep turning out in the way that you're saying that you know Trump voters are turning out, it is vulnerable. So you can't you can't relax. We've seen. In states where Republicans relax, you can see where you can lose the grip on something that you think you had. So you just have to be careful with it, I think. Yeah. Uh, Mike Bloomberg. Mike Bloomberg's a goner. We oh, lost him. We're going to we miss lost, him. We lost him. He got, what, eight, six, eight delegates? American Samoa. <laughs> American Samoa, uh, which, as it turns out, did not give him the mo momentum he needed to uh, see a pathway to securing that nomination. He, of course, has thrown his support uh, to think, Joe Biden. You think he starts to wonder, like, I should have started this earlier. I mean, he bought his way yeah. to third place. Yeah. I mean, it's, that's no small feat running for president of the United States. Your, your, your party's primary, you get third place. He bought it. Does he wish he started earlier? I, th I think they would have backfired on him. because I think people saw those ads for so long and it's like, wow, that guy looks pretty polished and like a good leader. And then they see him in person. They're like, wow, he sucks. And so, it's, so it's like if they so saw maybe, him early. So then maybe, or maybe if he would have just not done the debates. Right. I think he, he should have kept, well I think he kept up with that he, strategy. I think when, when you see Mike Bloomberg in person and you hear him talk, you're like, I don't like anything about you. <laughs> and so <laughs> that, I think I'm, that hurts I'm him. I'm five nine and a half. I like to say five ten, but I have to say five nine and a half. Or five, sorry, five ten and a half. I like to say five eleven. But, oh, but now we don't we're just you. exaggerating. Now we don't believe you. Well, I don't even believe five nine and a half. <laughs> <laughs> My point was, even I, as a sh like not a tall man. Cannot I couldn't ever support somebody who's that short. I, it's wrong. It's shortism. <laughs> that is it's hard. shortism. But like I need to feel like when I walk up to the leader of the world that I'm not looking down on you. He like, hates short people. I, look, I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> what sorry. if the next great Republican is short? Are you just gonna be like I can't support you? I, I might have to. So I've said I said I have a hard time supporting fat people. See? If you can't take care of your body, how are you gonna take care of the country yeah. or business? That's a fair. Well, point. that's fair, and I don't I don't like to go to a like a health 
expert, a doctor or someone who is overweight. Yeah. So I'm like, what are you going to tell me? <laughs> well, Mike Bloomberg was trying to change that with his soda tax and nobody would let him do it. You know, he was was. Health poor conscious. Mike Bloomberg. He knew better than uh, than the rest of it's us. Funny, he's it's, got a lot of money to, to blow seven hundred billion dollars or million dollars. Is he one of your uh, is he one of your free market Democrats? Oh, come on. <laughs> come on. It, it's funny now that he was like a terrible racist and sexist. And now all of a sudden he's supporting Joe Biden. He's like the Democratic hero who's going to fund Joe Biden to the nomination. It switches just if like that. If you play ball, as you, soon as he you're, dropped you're, out. The, like, you're on the team. They were killing him like two days ago, and now he's he's good again. Yeah. Uh, before we uh, before we continue, we do want to take a very solemn moment to remember Mike Bloomberg. Mayor Bloomberg, as mayor of New York, you declared war on obesity. You banned trans fats from restaurants and you tried to do the same with large sugary drinks. So if you become president, will you push those policies on the national level as well? Well, I think what's right for New York City isn't necessarily right for all the other cities. Otherwise, you'd have a naked cowboy in every city. So let's get serious here. Tejas, we'd say here. Te what did you say? Tejas. Tejas. That's Spanish for Texas. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're in a Cuban neighborhood, so you got to know the gotcha. your audience. <laughs> All right, we'll cross the street, guys. Don't get hit coming across. <laughs> The restraint that Ooh. that woman showed uh, when he <laughs> mansplained to her, <laughs> whitesplained to her, excuse me, ma'am, it's Tejas. We, we around here, yeah. us folks around these here parts, we like to call it Tejas. You're in a Cuban neighborhood. Yeah, right. Cuban yeah. neighborhood. Please, <laughs> please, ma'am, please, don't offend the Cubans. <laughs> I can't, as many times as I have watched that, it still upsets me. It's my skin crawl. <laughs> it, it really Shaking the dog's face is pretty me. bad. It, it was bad. Did, was he joking? Was he joking when he said that? No. I think he was joking. I, I don't he was, think he was joking. I thought he was joking. I thought he just didn't, like his face is so like static. He, that he just he doesn't, doesn't know how to joke. a sense of humor. I don't know. I, don't I, don't know. I, I think joke. he tries, but he's awful at it. I guess the, the joke. He made the naked cowboy yeah, joke. He made the naked cowboy joke. So <laughs> there was like three people so that maybe, but that. <laughs> Well, we never said he was a good joke, sir. Aaron. But God, that that day, that that like day period where everybody was in Texas pandering, I wanted to just die. <laughs> you know, just Beto and, and Biden at Whataburger. I was like, get out of my state. Yeah. I'm so glad it's over just because of that. Uh, up next, we still have Elizabeth Warren. Where does she go from here? And President Donald Trump weighed in on the results last night in true Donald Trump form. And you're not going to want to miss that. But first. Got a question for you. What do companies like Ring, Hint, Tacovas, and even us here at Blaze Media all have in common? You don't know the answer, so I'm just going to tell you. They all use NetSuite to accelerate their growth. Now, successful companies, Grant, you know this. You're an entrepreneur. You know in order to grow faster, you have to have the right tools so that you can right. know your numbers. You got to know your numbers. If you don't know your numbers, you're, you're nothing. You're lost. lost. Yeah. Totally well, lost. I mean, your company can quickly spiral out of control and get away from you if you don't know your numbers. And this is great because you can get your numbers from anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's in the cloud, the magic cloud. You can get them from wherever you are. If you want to take your company from two million to ten million, or ten million to hundreds of millions in revenue, Netsuite by Oracle gives you the tools you need to turbocharge your growth. You will get a full picture of your business. They've got finance, inventory, HR, customers, and all of these are in sync with each other. They're all talking to each other, all in one place, right from your phone or computer. Like Grant said, it's in the cloud, so you can get it wherever you are. NetSuite's going to give you the visibility and control you need to make the right decisions and grow with confidence. NetSuite customers grow faster than the S&P 500. They are the number one cloud business system in the world, trusted by more than 19,000 companies. Let them help you. You can go to netsuite.com slash and you will receive a free guide, six ways to run a more profitable business. Again, I mean, I know I say this every time, but I, I think you probably own a business because you're in it for the profit. 
So there's no reason not to do this. You got to go to netsuite.com slash why. That is netsuite.com slash why. President Trump, of course, weighed in last night on the Super Tuesday Democratic primary results. Uh, he, he says the biggest loser by far, remember this was last night, the biggest loser tonight by far is mini Mike Bloomberg. His, quote, political consultants took him for a ride. 700 million washed down the drain and he got nothing for it but the nickname Mini Mike and the complete destruction of his reputation. Way to go, Mike. Why, and I appreciate the his, exclamation Why are point. his names so effective? Like, that's what I don't, like, it's a dumb, like, Mini Mike is a dumb juvenile. <laughs> Mini Mike is but one of my he'll favorites. he'll never get away from that. I know. Ever. Like, I think, it's so effective. Bloomberg <laughs> brought out the best in Trump's, like, slander. Like, yeah. I think the personal relationship they had. So we're going to miss some of the best tweets because Bloomberg is gone now. It's not slander if it's true. He well, is me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and then he followed that up, President Trump did, with one more tweet. Elizabeth, quote, Pocahontas Warren, other than Minnie Mike, was the loser of the night. She didn't even come close to winning her home state of Massachusetts. Well, now she can just sit back with her husband and have a nice cold <laughs> beer. I love it. You can't Does get he think he's up or is somebody writing them? I don't know, but it's... Oh, good. that is 100% Donald Trump. Yeah, I think Trump. that's him. It is? Absolutely. I, think that's him. I, don't I don't know think, how that guy does it. I don't it. think anybody who works for him would write stuff like that. They'd be too scared to pull the trigger Yeah, they'd be like, like let's just put the Twitter that. away. If someone so. does write for him, do the, does he have ultimate approval? Does it have to go through him for I approval? I think so. I, I picture so, him right? literally on his phone like all the time. So just that's, him, I, that's how I see it too. Is like, yeah, he's so controlling. He's like, get away, get away from me. I, I do it better than I you. Know they try to take his it. phone, I, but I'm, he you know. takes it into the John. Yeah, he's I, like, nah, nah, nah. I got it. I got it. Yeah, that's got to be him. <laughs> Every time he goes to the bathroom, everybody gets nervous because they know the tweets are gonna start flying. <laughs> you okay, Mr. Trump? Uh, <laughs> uh, but very expert trolling from President Trump last night. He did bring up, though, Elizabeth Warren, who announced today that she's she's just she's checking it out. She's going to uh, reassess her presidential campaign. But she is still, as of the time of this taping, who knows what could change in just a few hours after Super Tuesday results. But she, as of the time of this taping, is still planning events in Michigan and Ohio. I mean, that's got to be embarrassing to lose your home state of all places. If you lose your home state in a presidential election, even if it's a primary, you might as well kiss the whole thing goodbye. Right? If your own people will not vote for you, how do you think you can get other states to vote for you? Yeah, right before Bloomberg dropped, he was reassessing too, so I imagine this is just you a little grace believe. period. For, like, for what? Like, what else is she doing? Is she just trying to spite Bernie at this point by taking some of his you support? You think it's money, right? Like, what supporters are going to give her cash now? You don't want to just, sh I mean, I don't care how wealthy you are, you're not going to just shell out cash just just for fun. Yeah, she has no past. What fun is it to give her campaign Unless money. you're Mike Bloomberg and you're giving it to yourself. <laughs> right, to yourself. <laughs> and I've seen even groups that were like ardently supportive of her to say like, it's, it's time to pack right. it up. Like we wanted you to win, but clearly it's not going to happen. Well, I mean, there were people going into, going into Super Tuesday who were like, what you girl, yeah. you got to get out of the way for Bernie. You're siphoning off people who could potentially be voting for Bernie. Then Bernie has, you know, the, the night that he has, I mean, yeah, he got California and Colorado and Utah, but they, I think they maybe have a point that yeah, I mean, he could have picked up more delegates. She doesn't have a ton of support, but when you're talking about between him and Biden, how close they are, that 10% right. could be enough to, to give Bernie a leg up. And then we get into this whole, then we're in a different situation. If, if before the next primary, she drops out and endorses Bernie, mm. then you might see me getting a little more nervous about socialism in America, right? You know, yeah, 100%. And, you know, to what you said, too, about Election Day and, and get out of the way. So I was standing in line at a polling place, and there were a lot of Democrats there. And, and one of the ladies in front of me, she was very nice. She says, you know what, I waited till Election Day because I didn't want to waste my vote during early voting. Mm -hmm. And Texas has two weeks of early voting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it's a really fabulous point, you know, for the Democrats especially. Republicans not so much right now um, in the presidential race. But for the Democrats, you, you could make a vote two weeks earlier before Election Day, and your guy's out of the race. Well, you did just waste a vote. Yeah, yeah. I, I like early voting for the convenience for some people, but it, I think it's entirely too long here because a lot of people did vote for somebody who's just not there anymore. It did. It 2020 did make an excellent case for not having early voting because mm -hmm. there were a lot of people, you're right, who wasted their votes. Although, now that you bring that up, I did hear a lot of uh, complaints of voter suppression 
in places like Texas because the lines were long yesterday? So I waited an hour to vote, and I will tell you that the Democratic election judge there had pamphlets about the Democratic State Party Convention, and she was yelling and screaming about, does anyone want a Democrat? And I, I called her over. I said, ma'am, are you the election Electioneering. judge? And she says, yeah. I said, well, you're electioneering. Yeah. Said, this is not, this is a nonpartisan for the, for the, for the convention. I said, ma'am, you can't be yelling the Democratic convention while everyone's on. Wow. Here's my day. And she had, of course, blue hair, <laughs> overweight, 25-year-old jeans. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> If that's I, you I call like into the show. That. What is the yeah, age of the jeans factor in? Picture however, <laughs> however, you painted a very vivid yes. picture. People in California were complaining of the same thing. They saw very long lines as well. California, I'm sorry, I have absolutely no sympathy for you. You literally can vote by mail. Like you on election day, you can stick your ballot in the mailbox, you don't have to wait in any line, and they send you like a confirmation text apparently, and, and, and let you know that your vote has been tallied. And nor do you have to prove that you're even a citizen or that right. you, like nothing. You yeah, can just for vote. Texas, I don't know if you can say it's suppression that there's long lines when you have two weeks of early voting. Like, right. go oh, vote earlier. But if, I see, and I agree with you there. But then to the point that you had made, Grant. I understand someone wanting to wait until Tuesday. Well, then you'll write your butt in the line and be quiet. There it? was a new system in Texas, too, and it was all electronic. For, and typically, we hadn't had that on Election Day. We only had it for early voting. So you could vote anywhere you wanted, at least in Dallas County, where I voted. You could vote any polling place you wanted, and there were all kinds of problems with the machines. And so that's another issue when you go to a new system. Yeah. It never fails. Right, but they jump straight to, I mean, all I heard was voter suppression. Oh, and just a coincidence, it's in a minority neighborhood. Look, they're trying to suppress the minority vote. And I'm like, I, It's a no. primary. Who are we even trying to suppress? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. Y'all need to settle down with your uh, comments about voter suppression. All right. What do we got coming up next? We've got, uh, oh, AOC. No, let's, let's get into this right now really quickly before we go to break. AOC aligned progressive candidates. I'm sure you guys will be very devastated to hear that they fell flat in their Super Tuesday contest. So uh, maybe you didn't even know this, but um, AOC was, you know, she's trying her hand at primping these young progressive candidates uh, and, you know, who have similar platforms to herself and kind of putting them on the main stage and seeing what they can do. Um, the best that she could garner up was uh, Jessica Cisneros, who was an immigration lawyer who didn't win. She lost, and that was the best thing that AOC could take from the night. She tweeted out, I am so incredibly proud of Jessica Cisneros. Uh, at 26 years old, she ran for office for the first time. She stood up to, to the coach brother, money, and incumbency, and she came closer than anyone imagined. It's a good spin. Yeah, I think what we're seeing from, we saw it in 2018 too, and now, like these, there's not as much momentum behind these candidates as maybe the media would have you think. There's a few of them, and they're loud, and they're very prominent, but they're not succeeding in elections, and that's encouraging to me. Don't let them shape, they're trying to shape a reality, and this is, was my point about Texas, and I think, not that your, your concerns aren't valid, but they're trying to paint this picture that we are the crazy ones, and that there's this movement of, of far left-wing socialists that are gonna take over. Now there is that, Bernie has a movement, you can't deny that, but is it so overwhelming that they have the power Right now, anyway, we have to be vigilant. We have to fight for our ideas. We have to keep speaking the truth. But do they have the power? Does AOC have the influence? Does Bernie have the influence to really make these huge, uh, you know, steps towards what they want to accomplish? I don't think they do. Well, I, I think, think without they, the media behind them, yeah. they have very little power. I think the key is whether you have the establishment with you, because AOC was trying to go outside of the establishment right. to do her own thing, and Bernie's trying to go outside of that, and I don't think they have the influence to do that yet. So as long as the establishment of the Democratic Party is a certain way, I think that's where the majority of the candidates will be. If and the establishment starts to go the, right, that's further the left, then you have if another. If they follow them left and they say, you know what, there's too many of them. If we just join forces, we'll be more powerful. At that point, boom, we got something way bigger to worry about. Uh, up next, Republicans lean into the Biden probe as he surges in the primary. Back in a minute. Forgot about that thing. That's a good point, though. If, if, if like, they... 
Not wasting any time, Senate Republicans uh, just announced a new phase of their investigation into Hunter Biden and Burisma. Uh, Senate Homeland Security Committee Chairman Ron Johnson told reporters today that he is likely to release an interim report within one to two months on his panel's probe of Hunter Biden's ties <clears throat> into Burisma. Uh, you know, he said, look, the timing has nothing to do with the election calendar. This is it just so happens. <laughs> This is all happening at a really good time for us. Um, but I don't, I believe him. I mean, they've been looking into Hunter Biden. They've been, they were issuing subpoenas. This seems to go right along with the, you know, what they were doing before the Democratic primary. If you were just plopped into the United States and didn't know the whole history, and you were told the background of the Bidens and, and the Ukraine and Burisma, you would say, of course you need to investigate it. Mm. When you have the whole picture of all the politics, everything that happened with President Trump, no matter who investigates this, whether it's the Justice Department, whether it's the United States Senate, it's always going to be a call of this is about politics. Um, and, and any facts that we come up with are still going to be called into question saying, oh, well, it's just politics. Yeah. Um, something needs to happen, though, because the Bidens need to be held accountable for this, uh, specifically his son and specifically his, his, Joe Biden as the father. Because Joe Biden as the father enabled his son to profit off the vice presidency. And that's just flat out wrong. It's not how we do things in America. And the fact that he has not answered for it in any kind of substantial way, you have to keep the pressure up to make him answer those questions, especially as he, it does become more important as he becomes the front runner. I know people maybe don't like to hear that, but if he's, if there's a greater chance that he becomes a president, it becomes more important to hold him accountable for these things that he seems to have done. See, I play devil's advocate though. Uh -huh. If they have the probable cause right now, I think, to do this, right? they paying him 50 grand a month for mm -hmm. stuff he knows nothing about. His, his dad's the vice president. But to, to the flip side of this is if, if they don't come up with anything in this investigation and they keep, if they do the, what Democrats did with Russia to Biden, at what point do you then say, okay, you, you, you've used up you know, your, your that's research. A, there's a lot of evidence yes, there, though. That's a, you know, that would be a, don't you I feel think, like there's more? I think that would be that? a fair assessment if we hadn't even already seen here at Blaze TV, if we hadn't seen the documents and the evidence that really, I mean, you can't, I you, was can't thinking, you can't say that it doesn't exist because we've seen it. President Trump should appoint Glenn Beck as the special <laughs> prosecutor and give him a Presidential Medal of Freedom Yes, and let Glenn just go to town. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean I you think want to trigger the left. That would be really great. Um, I think the question that it will come down to if this investigation takes place, um, and, you know, Aaron, as you and I pointed out, I think that the evidence is there to show um, that it did happen. Um, will America care? Well, I don't think... The problem has always been they won't get exposed to it to the extent that they would need to be exposed to it to care because they would have to break through to the mainstream media networks that are clearly, a lot of them, supporting Biden. Mm. And so they don't have an incentive to really blow out like what's going on with Hunter Biden in Ukraine and all that stuff because why would they do that? They don't want Bernie Sanders to win. They want Joe Biden to win. So it's going to be minimized even if it breaks through at all. Yeah. Uh, a good reminder, by the way, to uh, always watch Blaze TV. Back in a minute. You're not going to hear this on the mainstream media. Yesterday's poll was who will be the big winner tonight with Super Tuesday 2020. I think some of you guys waited until after the results to cast your vote. 49% of you said Joe Biden. 45% said Bernie Sanders. 4% of you, I don't know, smoking crack and said Mike Bloomberg. <laughs> And 2% uh, of you are, yeah, are even more, worse yes. condition and said Elizabeth Warren. Come on. I didn't think Joe Biden was going to be the big winner uh, Super Tuesday. Did you? I thought he had a pretty good chance because of all the southern states that were involved in, in Super Tuesday. But I, I didn't really know. I mean, in some respects, that almost, you know, it was almost, what, 50-50? Mm-hmm. But your viewers got it right. I mean, they always said good you had job. the smartest viewers Drill. in America. I'm so proud. Well, they, they, I mean, I thought, yes, Biden, because of the avalanche of establishment support that came his way right before the uh, election day. So That's true. Or, Beto. I mean, I mean, he had probably obviously. like five people. Do you think endorsements on really that? help? I, mean, I, don't, I, I don't either. I, think, I, I don't think they do it normally. In an election like this where nobody, there is not a candidate who is rallying the, the vast majority of Democrats, I think it does matter. This plays right into the Democrats' philosophy that we can tell you what to do. Yeah. I endorse this person. I'm telling all my supporters to vote for them and they'll follow me blindly. That's ridiculous. I I'm do not voting for I anybody. I do think, though, when you, get, when you get dozens of endorsements, 
right before Super Tuesday, it does give people a sense, especially when you don't have a strong feeling one way or another, mm -hmm. gives you a sense that, the, that there's some uh, momentum. Yeah, there. I, I got to get to the poll. Um, I got to get to the poll today. But, you know, you just you think for yourself. That's not how yes, Democrats are. Thank you. That's not how Democrats are. No. Uh, today's poll, does Bernie stand any chance at getting the Democratic nomination while Elizabeth Warren is still in the race? Let us know what you think. You can go to The Blaze's Twitter, of course. That is at The Blaze. Gentlemen, thank you for being here. Thank you. We'll see you guys tomorrow.